Terran Orbital is a satellite products manufacturer that works primarily in the U.S. aerospace and defensive industry to provide satellite solutions and Earth observation solutions. Now, if you bought the stock when it went public back in April of 2021, well, you would be very disappointed as the stock is down roughly 90%. However, are things about to change? Well, two things. The low may have been put in a little bit above $1. And today, the company launched a responsive space initiative aiming to provide small satellites faster and more cost effectively. Let's look at the video before we continue with the analysis. Now we have a special guest for you. Our next guest is making news today in the final frontier. Okay, Mark Bell is with us, co-founder, CEO, Terran Orbital. Ticker symbol is LLAP, live long and prosper. So it, I'm so happy you're with us today, Mark. Thanks for coming back on the show. Uh, big news, 10 satellites. You've never done so many at a time. What's going on? Uh, it's great. We launched 10 satellites last Friday uh, for the Space Development Agency. It's for part of the Defense Department and part of what they're basically building something called the transport layer in space. So it's a way that satellites in space will communicate with that, and that's always connected to the ground. And it's a very exciting program. We're building another 42 of them right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, about to begin another, that's called, sorry, go ahead. Wow, so you're building more. You're, and that's the whole thing. Terran Orbital is part of the whole thing. I mean, you're launching these, you're, de you're uh, you know, you have design, production, launching pads, uh, mission operations, and orbit support, right? Pretty much. Yeah, we, we um, provide an end end solution for every, everything yeah. they need. So you're working on over 40 more. You launch 10 satellites on one ship, get these up into the air. And as you said, you were telling us it's like the internet up in the in space, but sending the, the data to one particular piece, right? Explain that. So what happens is you have satellites taking pictures of the Earth, for example. Instead of transmitting back to the Earth, they transmit it to something called the transport layer, which is always connected to the Earth, and that sends, that sends the photo home. It's much more energy efficient. Now, who owns the transport layer? Uh, the, the Department of Defense. Department of Defense. So you're helping Department of Defense by providing more and more information and data right. for them to have. Right. It's all about protecting the warfighter, and it's called the proliferated warfighter architecture. It's a mouthful. Yeah. But they are, at the end of the day, it's about protecting our men and women in the field, making sure they come home safe, and this is part of that solution. I mean, it's so exciting. And when I looked when I looked through your company now, I mean, we knew you were a Star Trek fan in your young <laughs> days, and I saw some of the, the ships, and Enterprise, Voyager, Celsius, some of these, uh, maybe if someone's a Star Trek fan, like our producer, <laughs> he said, oh, those are all old Star Trek names. Um, and, and you're not doing your Mark Bell capital management anymore. You sort of really just put all your eggs in this basket right now. I am 100% all in on space and all yeah. in on Terran Orbital. That's what I'm focusing on. I'm having an amazing time doing it. Even with the new satellites you just mentioned, we launched seven, we announced seven new satellite buses just the other day. And that's part of what's going to become our rapid response initiative. So it's my understanding you're able to try and work with company. You can work. It's military. It's civil. Um, you're able to work, you know, commercial customers and basically within 30 days give them a customized satellite, right? Uh, of yeah. some sort. So the goal is by the end of next year, they'll be able to order what's called a bus, which is the, the, the thing, the engine of the satellite in 30 days. And the payload could be whatever they want, communications, 5 G, Internet things, another 30 days, so 60 days, they get a complete satellite. It's amazing. It's, it's great. I mean, that's what they're looking for. I mean, when you think about working with the Department of Defense, I mean, you certainly um, have a lot on your shoulders when you're, you're protecting our military and our planet, right? During COVID, didn't you find it fascinating how many of the satellites were seeing the change in the Earth, whether it was more green or more animals or more water or whatever, cleaner water, I should say, less pollution, right? There wasn't there a lot of that Less capture? cars on the road. Yeah. I mean, that's exciting, too. And so with this now, um, do you have competition from the likes of uh, some of our friends like Elon Musk and... Uh, you know, you have SpaceX, you have Blue Origin. I mean, are you finding that you guys work together or is it more uh, our, competitive? Our, our, our competition is really our customers. So we, our competition would be like Boeing, Northrop, 
Lockheed, Raytheon, and we're one third owned by Lockheed Martin. So we're, right. very, we're very proud. They're an amazing partner to have. We've been thrilled to have them as a partner. But we build satellites for everybody throughout throughout the uh, throughout the DoD uh, infrastructure. And you also recently um, put a, a piece in the Smithsonian, right? Tell us about that. Uh, so we, we're the guys who invented the CubeSat. It's a little satellite you can hold in the palm of your hands. And they called us up and asked if we had one of the original ones around, and we did. Does it look uh, something like this? This is actually is a one similar? fourth scale. Of it. Yep, <laughs> it's one fourth scale of that, and this is what this is it. This is it though. This is prop cube. This is what's in the Smithsonian. Yeah. And uh, it's on the second floor. It'll be there for 50 years, and we're uh, very excited about that. Oh, it's there for 50 years. So you made a real commitment there to the Air and Space Museum there. And just finally, I mean, I want to ask you about a few other things, but just finally, as we're on the the world of space, what else are you hoping to accomplish with Terran Orbital? You know, our response to space initiative really is a game changer. In 2005, this guy, uh, Colonel Jay Raymond, wrote a piece about response to space. He ended up becoming the creator of Space Force as a four-star general, mm. and he kept talking about it for almost 20 years, and we're taking his dream and making it a reality. I mean, what do you think about some of the other things that all come up in the news? We have uh, meteor, uh, meteorite or asteroids coming our way. You have, you know, UFOs everywhere. I mean, there's so many things that I read about that seem somewhat insane, but I don't know how real they are. I mean, what do you do when you read all those kinds of headlines? You, know, you have to you have to distill it out a little bit. You know, we're, uh, space junk is something everyone talks about, so we're doing a lot to help track uh, junk in space to make sure. What does that mean? You have uh, the, the Chinese and the Russians haven't necessarily been very responsible, and they've used anti-satellite weapons to blow, blow up a satellite, but creates debris. Mm -hmm. And what happens is these little screws and nuts are traveling oh, at six cool. kilometers a second, and they can go right through the International Space Station. They can right. go through, destroy a satellite. So tracking all this junk is very important and very, very, very significant. And how hands-on are you in? You know, create. You talked about the seven new buses, right? The different types of, um, you know that you can put out there for folks, the different product lines. How hands-on are you in, in configuring all of these? Well, I did, what do you say, like, they might need this, or, I mean? Well, they are named as Star Trek ships. So, uh, but they're, I, we're, I'm very hands-on, uh, more, more than my employees probably would like. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, I, I want to build a quality right. product. I want to build for a reasonable price, and we want to mass produce it. And where is all this happening? Is it uh, in the all, States? All, all, all over the United States. Yeah, uh, we're U.S. owned, U.S. made. Uh, made in America company. Um, nothing made abroad? Uh, we have a very small office in Italy which right. services only the European Space Agency. Right. That we do offshore. So let the good news So this is the weekly chart and potentially price has formed a double bottom. These wicks imply that defenders are defending this 110 level. Now for me, what I would love to see is price continue to move higher and close above the $180 level. Um, that would be the start of a W formation, which I like to see during reversal patterns near the bottoms it's not the greatest level but we do have a supply level or selling level at the 185 level so how we want to draw this formation. You got a drop, base, drop, rally, base, drop. Let's put it right there. So why is it subtle, but why is it a su supply area? selling area these two red extended range candles took out the pivot low which was once upon a time the all-time lows making this the origin of the strong move down 
And as you can see, when price pulled back into that level, price reacted. So that is a level that has to be respected. Weekly sellers at a dollar eighty five. Now let's take it down to the daily chart. What's also going to be significant if we can form a W pattern where price takes out the most recent pivot high, which was the origin of the leg down to retest the all time lows, is you have the 200 day moving average sitting right at 168. Anything below it, you're in a secular bear market. Anything above it, you are technically in a secular bull market. If the moving average is pointing to the right, up to the left, to the right, bottom to the right. All right, just looking here, you have some sellers here as well. So, you know, price has a tough road ahead of itself if it's going to move higher. It's just right now, there's just too much standing in the way of price moving higher, too much headwinds. You have the 100 day, 200 day moving average, you have weekly sellers, you have daily sellers. Let's mark it in. at the 230 level but you gotta start from somewhere right and why not start from the bottom thanks for watching subscribe please like the video